to labminutes.com. In this video, we'll be looking at hot standby routing protocol or HSRP configuration. HSRP has two version, version 1 and version 2. If your devices support version 2, I would definitely recommend you enable that. Version 2 allows you to assign a group number range from 0 all the way up to 4095. So for those of you who likes to keep the group number lines up with your VLAN number interface, this is exactly what you need. So in this lab setup, we have two routers, R1 and R2, that will be running HSRP. That's, um, the, they will be providing a default gateway to switch one. At the top, we have a WAN router loopback interface that uh, we will be using for a test ping. So let's get started. On router one, just going to show you we have a static route on router 1 that points to the WAN router loopback out the serial interface as well as router 2 the loopback interface next top the WAN router so at this point when you're trying to ping from switch 1 to the WAN loopback interface we're getting nothing and if we do show ARP you can see it's trying to use 4.1, which is our default static default route um, gateway, and it shows up as incomplete. That's because we have not completed HSRP configuration. So first we're going to go under uh, fast zero zero. If you do a standby command, you can see by default it, it's running version 1, and the group number is only between 0 and 255. So the first command we're going to do is enabling version 2. And if you look at that again, now you can see the group range extended up to 4095. I'm just going to pick 4, which lines up to our VLAN 4. Give it a name, VLAN 4. Next we'll give it a priority. By default, the priority is 100. We will bump it up to 110. Next, we're going to create, um, configure the preempt command. And looking at a different option, we're going to be giving it a delay. So when the HSRP is ready, it will not immediately preempt the currently active router. So we're going to do minimum of 10. So it basically will wait 10 seconds before it preempts. And at reload, we'll tell it to wait 2 minutes or 120 seconds. Next, we're going to tweak the hello timer which by default is 3 seconds and the whole time is 10 seconds. But here we're going to reduce it all the way down. We're going to use the keyword millisecond here. And we're going to do 300 millisecond with the whole time of 1 second. So that's roughly uh, about 3 hellos messages. And now we're going to activate the HSRP by assigning the virtual IP, which is 4.1. You can see there's an option to do a secondary as well, but we do not have a secondary IP configured on the interface right now. So do you show standby brief? You can see the router R, R1 has become active on group number 4. And right now there's no standby peer. Okay. So we're going to copy the majority of the config. Bring up our notepad. <coughs> this is going to be for R2. We do not need that. Version 2 do that last. Um, make sure the timers match. Um, priority, we're going to 
lower it a little bit so it's lower than R1, so 105. We do not want the preempt delay. We, we want, if the R1 fail, we want R2 to take over immediately. Same name and same IP. So, paste that. And you can see R2 is now a HSRP standby. That's to say standby local. Okay. Now let's try the ping again from switch one. You can see we can now ping 4.1. If we do show ARP, now you can see the virtual MAC address. So the format for HSRP version 2 is basically this. And the last three numbers or characters represents the group number. In this case, we have group 4, so we have number 4 right here. If we do trace, or actually let's try to ping the WAN loopback IP one more time, 6, we can now successfully ping. And if we trace, can see the packet takes the path out router 1, which is 4.2, to get to the destination. Okay. Let's try to debug. Oh, before we do the debug, let's do show standby. And you can see that the current state of R1 is active. Virtual IP is 4.1, also tells you virtual Mac, version 2, hold time, um, hold time, hello time. You can see the next hello is going to be sent. Um, Preem enable with the delay and reload. And it tells the IP of the standby router with its priority. So it tells you a lot of information on the show standby command. Next, we're going to do a debug. Um, debug hedge uh, standby packet just to see what we see. You can see a whole lot of um, packets coming in. I'm just going to stop right there. And this is because we tuned down the hello timer to 300 milliseconds. So basically, you receive three hello messages for every second. Here's hello out from R1 to R2, and here's the hello in from R2 to R1. So I'm going to bring up Wireshark, and right now we are spanning the R1 router interface so we can see what HSRP packages looks like. So let's start on this. And right away we can see HSRP packages. Um, let's choose one to look at. And protocol, Washrack knows this is the um, HSRP version 2 because of the destination um, multicast address of 2240102, which is a well-known multicast address for HSRP version 2, and also UDP uh, port 1985. Okay. If you look deep into the packet, Here's um, you can see a list of TLV. First one said it's a version two, and is it's a hello packet. State of the router or the sender is the is active. We're doing via IPv4, group number four. Priority one ten, so it's telling R2 is priority is one ten, and you have this microsecond, um, um, millisecond hello time and hold time as well as virtual IP and there's a few called text authentication so by default even though we have not really configured authentication by default the password is Cisco and you can also see it's being sent in clear next we go we are going to enable authentication so on R1 we're going to do key chain key HSRP key number one, key string 
let's call something, since we just found out it's a Cisco, that's a default password, let's call it something different, which is, uh, let's choose lab minutes. We go under fast zero zero. Standby for authentication. We have a choice of MD5 or text. Of course, you probably want to choose MD5. And you can do a key string directly, but in this case, we created a keychain. So we're going to reference the keychain HSRP. As soon as you do that, since we have not done that on R2 yet, it immediately said bad authentication. So we're going to have to copy this over to R2. And enable the authentication as well. Before we do that, take a quick look. Since its authentication is failing, it assumes itself is an active node. But as soon as we, let's see, we can copy again. As soon as we Enter the enter the authentication key. It becomes uh, standby again. Just to show you what the packet looks like after the authentication has been enabled. Again, stop. The TLB is pretty much the same, but now you can see there's an MD5 authentication TLB added, and we no longer see the actual key in the payload. So as soon as you en enable MD5 authentication, I was being sent just the key ID and not the key itself. So, so that more secure. Next we will uh, do an interface tracking. So let's give your scenario if right now if the zero interface on R1 fail switch one will be will continue to send all the traffic to R1 since R1 will still assume the active role and that's just going to black hole the packet. So what we need to do is as soon as the serial interface fail we want R1 to give up the active role and we want R2 to resume that. The way to do it is by the tracking, interface tracking. We create a track one, we want to track interface, and interface we want to track is 010, and here we're just going to do line protocol. Now we just stand by for track. You can either refer it to the track object, or you can actually do the um, tie to the interface directly here, but we just created the track object one. So we're going to refer to that. You can either do shutdown totally or you can decrement the, the priority. So here we have it 110 on this side, 105 on the other, on the other side. We're going to decrement 10. So it will become 100. That's below 105. And that should be enough for our one to become a standby. Now to test, we do shut. You can see immediately become standby. We show standby. The current priority is now 100. Configure 110. And um, R2 is now an active node. Going back to switch one. If you do traced or ping, it can still ping. But if you do traced, it's now going out R2, just 4.3. So the failover works successfully. To bring it back, we're going to do no shut. Okay, you have to wait 10 seconds because that's the preempt delay that we specify. So that's about 10 seconds has passed and now it's become active. So we are good to go. 
So thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys next time.